Hello and welcome back to Thinking Out Loud. I challenge perceptions through education and humour, empowering others to be more disability confident. So I went to Rotterdam as a blind girl, completely on my own. Yes, that's right. Blind girl solo travels to Rotterdam. I have never been abroad or anywhere in the UK without assistance since I lost my sight. Whether that's like a friend travelling with me or a family member or my partner. Apart from the places I know in my local area, I really don't go out of my comfort zone per se. And now that I have Ida, my guide dog, I've grown so much in confidence and I did something that I didn't really ever think I would do, which was travel solo. And not only that, but to a different country, to a country I've never been to, and to meet people I've never met. She's never been on a plane, so it was her first plane trip, our first adventure together. The reason we went to Rotterdam was because I went to my first ever travel conference. It was Traverse 18. I went so I could meet new people, I could network, make friends, and it all went fantastically well. I made lots of friends, I got drunk, <laughs> I wouldn't expect that when it's your first time ever on your own, you're in a country you don't know. So many potential worries for your first ever solo trip and I took it all in my stride, I really didn't expect to, I was really nervous in anticipation of going but it ended up literally being one of the best experiences of my entire life and something I cannot wait to do again. So, who could believe that I am in a business class on the Big O flight? Thanks to Laura Daniel for sharing their flights with me. Ida and I are enjoying a very relaxing flight. I have ham salad and some champagne. So, we're going to enjoy that while she's enjoying her treat at my feet and we will check in with you soon. Bye! So this video I kind of wanted to make into a how-to video with tips and tricks for disabled people but particularly people who are blind who've never been abroad or have never done anything completely on their own. I know I had the help of a guide dog and to some people they might say I had that extra support and I'm not going to lie, she was the reason I had the confidence to go abroad and travel because I don't think using my white cane I would have had the skills or the motivation. Tip number one, be prepared. That means taking all the documents you'll need and keeping it together. I use a little travel planner and it holds everything together, my passport, my cards, my cash, my tickets, I print out everything I'll need, itineraries, even though I can't see to read anything on paper anymore, it's always good to have a copy and have it in writing. I take my prescriptions with me, I take absolutely everything I can think of and I keep it in this travel wallet. Leaving the UK and particularly travelling abroad on a plane comes with its own set of rules and situations when you have a dog, especially a service dog and in my case a guide dog. So Ida needed a passport, she needed extra paperwork, she needed vaccinations and she needed to be signed off by a vet to make sure she was fit and healthy to travel and legally able to travel with me. So I had to keep all her stuff in this travel wallet as well. Make sure that everything you have 
in paper and writing is also on a folder on your phone and you've got all the correspondence and everything that you need there as well. Tip 2. Book special assistance. So anytime I go away, even if it's just within the UK and I'm on a plane, I always book special assistance. It makes life so much easier for you and whoever you're with. But to take me through an airport that's got so many people there, it's just nice to know that you've got extra assistance as you need it. And you get through much quicker and you bypass all the queues. Something I've recently found out is called an airport escort. And basically this is someone that can assist you when you are waiting for your plane at the terminal and they can take you to duty free in any way you want to. It saves you sitting there by yourself, especially if you're totally blind and have never travelled on your own before. I know BA does this particularly well and I'll link that information below. I haven't used it myself because I've always had a partner or I've just used the special assistants and been quite happy to sit there on my phone waiting for my flight. For those of you who've never travelled by train before, you can also get special assistants on trains. This is done slightly differently because you have to have booked your tickets and then you can phone up the National Rail, again I'll link it below, and say what train you're on, what line you're on, and then they will make sure that someone is there to take you onto the train, find your seat, and when you get to the destination someone will come on the train and get you off and take you to the exit. I also must mention here that that has never fully happened for me, so I always get on the train with assistance and get off by myself. I know some people who have been left stranded sitting on the train when they should have had assistance turn up and get them off. So if you're confident enough, get up from your seat and find the nearest exit and don't be afraid to ask for help if you need to do that. Tip 3. When you do board the aircraft and sit down, you will have a member of the crew come over and basically ask if you need any assistance for anything like getting your drink and whatnot. But most importantly, they will give you one-on-one -on -one direction and instruction on all the safety procedures. So as there is someone standing at the front of the plane giving you this information, you'll have someone showing you your life jacket, showing you where your oxygen mask is, and showing you the brace position if you were to need it in an emergency. Tip four. Use every app you have at your disposal. For those that don't know, Uber is a really accessible app with voiceover. And the beauty of it is that it locates where you are through GPS on your phone and also uses payment via your debit or credit card. So you don't need to carry cash around. I feel that this is quite a safe option and a good option if you're stuck and not sure where you are in terms of getting to the next location if you're traveling completely on your own. Other apps I would definitely recommend Soundscape, uh, Seeing AI, Era, which is quite pricey and in another video which I'll link below and Move It. This is a bus app and it's good because it'll give you your GPS location and find the nearest bus stop to you and where it will go telling you which stop as well. Tip number five, the most important tip there is, don't be afraid to ask for help. Asking someone locally to point you in the right direction when you reach your hotel and asking the receptionist to guide you up to your room, whether that's each morning coming down for your breakfast again, going to reception and asking would they be able to assist you. Being confident in knowing that you don't have to do everything on your own. You might be on your own and you might be completely independent, but if you feel lost or stuck or just want reassurance for what's on the menu, just ask. I asked all the time when I was away in Rotterdam and that's kind of how I got home safe. Everywhere I have been, the general public have bent over backwards to support me even when I haven't approached them first. I honestly had the best time on my first ever solo travel trip as a blind girl. I'd recommend it to anyone that feels that they can't travel by themselves and I know it's all about confidence and especially if you have a disability there's so many other factors involved but I did it when I never thought I would and it genuinely was an experience I cannot wait to repeat. To everyone at Rotterdam that I met, thank you so much whether you showed me to the toilet where the next talk was happening or just to come up and say hello to Ida and I. It was great meeting all of you 
and I look forward to hopefully meeting you again next year. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, I would love for you to subscribe. Leave me a comment down below if you did go to Rotterdam because I want to say hello and follow your channel. If you're a disabled person and thought this video was useful or want to know any more in finer detail about my trip, I'm more than happy to chat to you. So please leave comments below. Bye!